What up, YouTube? So, about two years ago, someone broke into my car, and they stole my car stereo. So for about two years, I didn't have any music in my car, and it, it really sucked. And then one day, I was on YouTube, and I saw a video about a circuit that's called a monobox. It's actually made by uh, Make Magazine, and they posted it. And basically what it is, is it's uh, a circuit that amplifies, you know, your iPod or anything. And it powers uh, one speaker. So I was like, cool, maybe I can make a stereo out of that. Maybe I can power all four of my car's speakers. So I, uh, I tried it a couple times, and it didn't really work the first time around. Um, after some trial and error, though, I eventually got it to work. And um, check it out. So this was the original circuit that Make Magazine posted on their website. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain some of the components of the circuit, some some parts that I found interesting, and then I'll go into the cost of the circuit as well as some of the improvements I think I can make. So first of all, um, this middle piece right here is a schematic for the LM386 amplifier. Basically how it works is uh, a signal comes in in the form of a voltage across pins 3 and 2 right here and it basically amplifies that signal and spits it out over here on pin 5 between pin 5 and ground and then it goes to the speaker. One important part is the Zobel network which is right here. It's basically the resistor, a resistor and a capacitor put in parallel with the speaker. So basically what it is is it cancels out any kind of impedance across the speaker. So basically the speaker, you can think of the speaker as an inductor and a resistor in series. And if there wasn't a Zobel network there, as frequency would go up, the impedance across the inductor in the speaker would increase, which would cause problems. So basically what the Zobel network does is when you put a resistor and a capacitor in parallel with the inductor and the resistor, it cancels out that impedance. So as frequencies get higher, voltage across um, the speaker kind of remains the same. It's more stable, basically. So the decoupling capacitor is, I found, very important, important as far as um, making having good sound quality. So basically what a decoupling capacitor is, is it's put in parallel with a load a DC load and it basically filters out any kind of noise that's riding on the DC. If your car's stereo power supply has any kind of noise, any kind of ripples in the DC signal, it's gonna take care of that. It's gonna filter it out. And when I was testing it, I had one time, when I hooked it up and tested it, I forgot to put in the decoupling capacitor and it sounded like crap. It was really bad. And then I put it in, and it sounds a lot better. So this is a really important component to the circuit. Don't forget to put it in. Okay, so this is my modified version of the circuit. So like I said earlier, it's basically the circuit I was just showing you. However, they're powered by putting them in four of them in parallel. So although it looks different, they're, it's pretty much the same circuit, but just four of them in parallel. Um, I also added this 12 volt LED right down here. It's uh, you can buy it at Radio Shack. It's basically an LED and resistor and in a little housing that is easy to mount on a box or wherever you're gonna place this circuit. 
So I added that, and then right here, this 100 microfarad capacitor is the decoupling capacitor. Like I said, it's important to have that. It improves the sound quality. Um, one interesting thing to know is, obviously, it's a stereo. It's not a mono box. So basically, if you look at the stereo jack here, uh, stereo jack has, I think, five pins total. But there's a left pin and a right pin, as well as a ground pin. So with stereo, you have a signal on the left and a signal on the right. So the signal obviously on the left goes to your left ear, and the signal on the right goes to your right ear. And with the mono box, how they made it in Make Magazine, they just connected the left and the right together, and that powered the speaker. They had one speaker that was powering left and right at the same time. With the stereo, like I said, you have speakers for your left ear and your right ear or your left side and your right side. So if you look at it, you can see that um, the left side comes up to these first two amplifiers and these two amplifiers amplify this signal and go to your front left and right left speakers whereas the right signal comes in and is amplified and goes to your front right and your rear right speakers. So some improvements one problem I had with this circuit was distortion. So when I would turn the volume up on my iPhone or I, iPod, um, when I turn it up all the way, it was it would start distorting and and the signal or the sound would sound really bad. Um, and then I soon found out that your iPhone and your iPod puts out about 1.5 volts max and your the max input voltage of the LM386 amplifier is only 0.4 volts so you can imagine if you turn your uh, iPhone all the way up at 1.5 volts and this amplifier can only handle 0.4 volts there's gonna be a problem and which which cause which is what caused the distortion so how I would improve this would I, w I would increase the gain. So like I said earlier, the LM386 amplifier has a bunch of cool things you can do with different pins. And if you look at the data sheet, one of the uh, application hints is you can put a capacitor and a resistor between pins 1 and 8 on the amplifier. And by adjusting the values, I suppose, of the resistor and capacitor, you can change the gain from 20 to 200 volts. So, you know, that way your amplifier is going to be amplifying a signal a lot louder and you won't have to turn your iPhone all the way up so you can still stay under that 0.4 volt maximum voltage but it'll be a lot louder. So you can still enjoy loud music without distortion basically. Okay, so uh, two other things I would do um, if I were to rebuild this circuit would be to add a fuse for one and also adjust some of the wiring. So what I would do is measure the amount of current this circuit draws on average or the max amount of current it draws. Um, get an idea for that value and then you know install a fuse. As far as putting pones close together it's important to have short wires. That's one thing I didn't do. I didn't think about it when I was uh, cutting wires um, to hook everything up and I made my wires way too long and the problem with long wires is it basically serves as an antenna so any other electrical circuit or any magnetic field in your car is going to induce a current in these long wires which just causes more noise which actually is a problem with the circuit right now is as I'm driving around, if I have it, if I don't have any music playing, but the circuit's on, if I'm driving around, um, I can hear a whining sound as I speed up. So basically, as I step on the gas, this whining sound increases with my RPMs, and I suspect it's probably my uh, alternators is causing noise, um, inducing you know a signal in these long wires. So, anyways. Keep your wires short and place your components close together. Okay, so here's the stereo. First of all, I put it in a old cigar box I found in my garage. Inside, 
here's the actual circuit I built. There's here's the the four amplifiers. Um, here's the decoupling capacitor. So this is the second time I've ever built this circuit on a perforated board. So it was kind of difficult. Um, I made all this wiring out of just stripped wire, basically. Soldered it all together. And as you can see, all the connections that go into my my car, all the wiring is very long, which, like I said earlier, is not good. I would definitely change that. So here's the switch mounted in the cigar box, and here's the LED uh, housing little kit that I was talking about with uh, the LED and resistor put in series. Like I said, you can buy the Radio Shack. Here's the phone, the headphone jack right here. I forgot to mention that uh, I put a switch in uh, the circuit. I don't think it's in the schematic, but basically I just put it in series where the 12 volts come in on the circuit. It's important to have a switch because you don't want your car or you don't want the stereo um, drawing power while your car is not on. So the cost of the circuit, I made a cost sheet. Um, I based all the prices off what I found at Radio Shack. Um, total cost is $56.78, about 57 bucks. But it's you can order these components online ahead of time and probably cut this price in half. So you're looking at more, you know, 25, 30 bucks at most to build this circuit. So I'll leave a link in the description of the cost sheet as well as the schematic and um, a couple tips and maybe a link to the Make Magazine video so you can get an idea of how to build a monobox circuit before you jump into this one. Um, let me know if you have any questions and if this was at all of any help.